Let's talk about Carrie's risk assessments. All right, for me, you know, being able to correctly identify what are the risk factors for my patient that's in the chair, being able to identify those things and then being able to target my treatment to those specific risk factors. That in you know, essence is the art of being a dentist, right? I'm not just a technician. I'm not just somebody that's just gonna drill a hole and put a filling in it. I can teach anybody that does not know anything about dentistry how to do that. That's, that's easy, right? The doctor part of all this is being able to correctly diagnose and to correctly tailor your treatment to that specific patient. So there's a term we use called CAMBRA. You may have heard this term thrown around before. Essentially what it stands for is carries management by risk assessment. So essentially the shortest definition I understand is you identify the risk factors and then you tailor your management of that patient or your treatment of that patient to target those risk factors. So historically in dentistry, we've had a very surgical model mindset. What does that mean? That means that we've been technicians. We've been more drill and fill kind of people, right? Oh, there's a hole in the tooth. Let's drill that out. Let's put a filling in that. I don't care how it got there, right? I'm not worried that it may happen again. I'm just addressing that specific issue at that very moment in time. That is a surgical model approach. As you can see, it doesn't really focus on prevention. It doesn't really think about why the, the caries process occurred in the first place. And it doesn't think about how are we gonna prevent it. So that's not really the mindset we're treating our patients with now. You know, if you wanna be a good dentist, a good doctor of dental medicine, you need to understand the risk factors and how you can target your treatment. So this idea of Cambra is actually an evidence-based way of looking at your patient. This whole idea of a caries risk assessment actually started with the California Dental Association. They kind of initiated their own process for this. And now, if you look at a lot of the different agencies out there, like the ADA, um, you know, there's various corporations, companies, what have you, that's incorporated their own risk assessment. So there's a lot of spin-offs of the original Cambra model. Now specifically for the purpose of this lecture, I'm gonna look at two caries risk assessments. We're gonna just glance at the CDA one, the California Dental Association risk assessment. And then we're gonna look at the American Dental Association risk assessment. Um, specifically, the one I use is the American Dental Association risk assessment. Now here's the beauty of a risk assessment. You can make your own, right? You can say, these are the things that I want to look for in my patients. And if they're present, then this is what I'm going to do to manage that. So you don't have to just use a specific risk assessment. You can actually design your own risk assessment. So the majority of your risk assessments are going to have a few things on them. Okay. It's going to have a section where you actually look at disease indicators or clinical presentations like what does the patient have clinically going on that I see right now, all right? And then they're also gonna have on there a way to analyze any type of protective factors, meaning like what kind of things is the patient doing to help prevent dental caries? And then the other thing it's gonna look at is specific risk factors. What things is the patient not doing or potentially doing that's detrimental that could be increasing the risk of dental caries. So in your handout, I actually have a you know, picture of the California Dental Association's caries risk assessment form. And this specific one is for children over the age of six. And you'll see there, there's a section for disease indicators. You know, do you see caries in the mouth or on the radiograph? Are there white spot lesions? Has the patient had a restoration in the last three years? You see risk factors, you know, is there a lot of plaque on the teeth? Does a patient snack a lot? Are there deep pits and fissures, etc.? And then you see protective factors. You know, you're looking at how often is the patient using a fluoride toothpaste? Um, how often are they getting a fluoride varnish? How often are they using sugarless gum? Right? So 
there's all these different things. It's like a checklist. You just go down the list and you, you circle yes if it applies and you don't circle anything if it doesn't apply. And then you kind of tally up all those responses and it'll put the patient in one of four risk categories. Specifically for this carries risk assessment form, they have low, moderate, high, and extreme risk. So extreme risk on this form actually applies to whether or not the patient has a salivary issue or reduced salivary gland function. All right. So again, most of these risk assessment forms are going to be very similar in how they're laid out looking at a lot of the same things. So next let's look at the ADA carries risk assessment form. So if you look at this form in your handout, you'll see that there's three big categories that you look at. They have contributing conditions, general health conditions, and clinical conditions. So when you're going through this with your patient, you just go line by line and you just answer yes or no to these questions. Now this specific form is for age six and above. So if you're using it for a child younger, there's a separate form for those children. Now again, you go through, you answer yes or no, and then you kind of tally up all those responses. And then it gives you an overall assessment of that patient's dental caries risk. And you know, some specific things that you look at, <clears throat> it's much just like the California Dental Association. It's, it's very similar. You know, you're gonna look at fluoride exposure, if there's cavities present, if there's plaque present. Uh, you're gonna look at things like exposed root surfaces, um, tooth morphology, if the patient has any eating disorders, medications, xerostomia conditions such as like history of chemo um, or radiation therapy. So it really helps you kind of target and focus on specific risk factors for your patient. So one thing to remember when you do a risk assessment is you look at risk factors, things that could be contributing to the disease process. You also look at risk indicators, you know, visual signs that disease has occurred or is occurring. But you still have to be, you know, a clinician and be able to figure out is the disease process active or is it not active? So that's where you kind of got to use this as a tool, right? It's not a black and white sort of scenario where you just do this assessment and you blindly prescribe a bunch of recommendations based off the assessment. You need to take the big picture approach. Look at the patient as a whole, not just specific cavities that need to be filled. We're not going to go the surgical model route, but look at the patient as a whole. Use what you see clinically, radiographically, Use what you gather from a dietary analysis. Use what you gather from this risk assessment form. And if the form says the patient's low risk, but you feel like, no, there's some things going on that I personally feel like this patient needs to be a moderate risk, then you have the flexibility to do that. If the form says the patient's a high risk, but you know that a lot of these risk factors aren't as big of an issue for that patient, then you may want to put the patient more in a moderate risk category. It's just a tool, so you have the flexibility to kind of modify your final risk assessment for that patient and adapt your treatment appropriately. Now many of the risk assessment forms, especially the ones that are well established, like the California Dental Association, they're gonna have treatment recommendations based off of how the patient scores on the risk assessment form. So they're gonna have their own management strategy. Now we're gonna talk a little bit in a second about the Anderson Medical Model. The Anderson Medical Model is essentially one strategy to help treat caries. It's not the only strategy, but it's one of many. So the key point is you use your risk assessment to identify the risk factors that are present and then you target your treatment using a specific management strategy whatever you choose to target those risk factors 